The Todd Shapiro Show. Time to hit the button. On Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167. Okay, so we're back here. I'm live in Winnipeg right now. Uh, Carbone Pizza, uh, Carbone Cafe Club. Amazing stuff. Uh, this is great. We're going to talk to the team here who's involved, Benjamin Nasberg and Pete Evans, who's a world-renowned chef, uh, had the best pizza ever in Australia, and he's got a talk show and a TV show and books and everything. A brilliant guy. So thank you so much to him. He'll be joining us in a moment. Uh, there's reports out of Toronto right now, and this is pretty crazy. Reports out of Toronto saying that Kawhi Leonard – Bought a home. My old buddy Michael Landsberg used to do the show with him on TSN. I'd fill in and stuff. And then Carlo Koliakovo got, got the job. Uh, they weren't going to offer it to me because I had my Series XM show, of course. Uh, they're saying that uh, Kawhi bought a house in Toronto. Is that a big sign that he's staying in Toronto? There were also reports out of the uh, uh, out of the news there uh, last year that he bought in L.A. He didn't buy in L.A. He bought like four hours from L.A. or something. I forget where, but it was closer to San Diego from what I believe, uh, which is not close to L.A. So uh, really, really great stuff if that's the truth. Kawhi Leonard buying a home in Toronto is what people are saying. And i got to tell you, my, my personal opinion on it is this. Is I... I would like to think that Kawhi Leonard has watched not only what the Raptors have done with him as a leader, as as a great teammate, and he makes that very clear that he 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 always is a humble leader and he speaks about the entire team. He's a very very good we guy as opposed to an I guy, and we see that in a lot of different sports where people talk I I I I did I no he's a we guy. So it, it truly is feels like he loves his team. The other thing is you would like to think that after a year, and despite the weather being completely essy in Toronto, or, you know, it's been a long winter, it's been a terrible, terrible spring, very rainy, and it's unconditionally uh, and unconventionally cold. I say unconventionally because you'd want it to be nice so Kawhi would go, oh, this is a great city. You know, we're used to like 28-degree days in Toronto, and it's not been. But you'd like to think that he is starting to embrace the city for what it is. It's diversity. It's love of human beings. It's, it's, it's you know, obviously acceptance, but it's sports fan nuts. We are emotional, crazy sports fans. We go nuts. We love it. We love the Raptors. We're showing what he's doing. And then beyond Toronto and beyond Ontario, Kawhi Leonard has a country that loves this man. Absolutely. There are going to be children named Kawhi. We've seen a movie in the past called The Carter Effect. There's going to be the Kawhi Effect one day. And that's quite point, uh, 5.0. So you would like to think that his camp is saying, hey, listen, yeah, we can go to L.A. Yeah, we can go to New York. There's, there's you know, different, different maybe markets that we could capture. But in Toronto, you have a country. And you also have, I think, a style of life that we're seeing from Kawhi fits his personality. A little more laid back, a little more easygoing, a little more humbled by nature. It, he doesn't have to be flashy here, and he can just sort of truly, truly, truly be a part of this city and this country as really an honorary Canadian. And that's the way I think people look at Kawhi. We, we're proud of him because he comes across like a Canadian, a Canadian that thanks people around them and holds door opens uh, holds the doors open and 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 does some amazing things for for other people and that's the way Kawhi is he's not about him he's not a flashy so you know and he, he comes across like a Canadian so if these reports from Michael Landsberg are true uh, not only is it great for him because he's going viral but it's just an amazing it'll be an amazing time in Toronto um and, and and maybe it's one of those things that is really genuine because they haven't won the NBA playoffs yet. And and I say that because they're going to win. They're going to win in six. They're going to be the Golden State Warriors in six. I know that for a fact. So what I love about it is if Kawhi stays doing it before they win. If that's true, he bought this house, and I'm jumping the gun right here maybe. But if he did it, he did it before the championship. So it's an exciting time. If it's true, we'll find out. And in the coming days, we'll find out if they win a championship. Let's get Benji. Let's get some people over here. Benj, come on over. I'm live on air. Get over here, buddy. Who do we have here? Let's uh, show my buddy Sean Dollinger's here. Uh, I got three mics here. Come on, boys. The mics are over here. Uh, Benji, the owner of Carboni Pizza. How you doing, brother? Live on air. Come on. Come on. Jump on over here, Sean. Uh, we got Pete Evans. Uh, uh, I spoke to him on the phone uh, months ago. Famous Australian chef. Uh, let's speak to Sean. Sean, where? Are, what, what's the deal here? What are you? What, 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 are you, what are you bringing me down to Winnipeg for? Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, dude. 
Great mm-hmm. seeing you. Nice to see you, Sean Dollinger. Nice seeing you. And yeah, no, I think it's incredible what Benji's building over here and thought you'd see it firsthand. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it's a new sponsor of the program, and we're really excited for them to expand and to grow their network. And uh, Pete Evans being a big part of that. There was a big press release grab. Pete, a famous Australian chef, you won best pizza in the world or something once. Yeah, we did. As, as a company, we opened a pizza restaurant maybe 15 years ago or maybe even longer, and uh, we competed at a few different pizza competitions, and we won... Actually, my chef out here, I think she came second one year, and um, one of my other chefs won it in New York, best pizza of the world. So here we are in well, Winnipeg. Well, so, so, and then, and then tell us about this now, this, this sort of joint venture, you and with, with Benji over at Caboni Pizza. Well, I think it's a, a, everybody loves pizza. You know, it's one of those things that... Really, everyone does love pizza. Every, like, it's crazy, right? Everybody does, but it's sort of like, what are you thinking about where we are now in the space of 2019 we have people that are vegan vegetarian paleo keto gluten-free you name it it's it's happening so pizza should be enjoyed by everyone so our goal is to make this a place where people can come that have every dietary requirement and for it to be a family environment too so something for everybody is is really the philosophy behind this instead of it just being a big ball of dough smothered in cheese we're trying to tweak that so we've still got that because people love to eat that but we're just playing around with some different bases some different toppings so that we cover all the bases and we bring pizzas up into the 2020s tell me about the tweaking tell me tell me what what wait tell me about the keto style tell me about the tell me about it sure so we're vegan base which is great so we're doing a hemp vegan uh, base we've got vegan cheese so fully covered for the vegans and vegetarians would we- people know like if we did a taste test with vegan cheese would i know no you wouldn't know i wouldn't even know it's that the, good well the vegan cheese market or paleo cheese because it's non-dairy let's just say non-dairy cheese is rapidly growing i just had friends in australia actually sending me or told me they're making cauliflower cheese that's like blue cheese now they're doing a hemp based cheese and it's like brie and camembert and truffle infused so like like next level type plant based cheeses. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And they melt. And good for lactose intolerant people too. Fantastic. And so the keto pizza is we're doing a meat base. So like a burger patty that you would get in a hamburger, we flatten that out. So we're actually using that as the base. <laughs> it's, 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 it's carnivore basically slash pizza. Listen, I and I and personally, I love that. I as much as I love pizza and carboni pizza, especially, I I, I try to stay off, uh, you know, the the gluten. I try to stay off the the dough a bit, um, and only because it just has a reaction with my body. It makes me feel a bit bloated. And I, I'm a, I'm a meat guy. I, I wouldn't never thought it, like a thin layer of meat, almost, almost like a shepherd's pie sort of. Like you would see that that meat base. Correct. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and it it, it tastes. Bloody good, too. No like, doubt, really Pete Evans. And no we, doubt. And we've got a few classics that I used to do. We've got um, a pork belly pizza with radicchios, and that... That's Where is that? Can we bring that out right We're now? We're going to bring it okay. out for you, brother. <laughs> Chili prawn pizza, which was one of my favorites oh. as well. And we've got a few specials that we're bringing on. We're using some wild salmon. We've got some asparagus when it's in season that we're going to be rolling out, too. So different types of pizzas we can special. You know what I say, Benji? You know what I say? Take that, Boston pizza. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. I'm serious, you know? Let's get some real food here. This is real food. This is is real food. So I hope you're hungry. Uh, I'm very hungry. And uh, congrats to to being here. Is there a difference, Pete, in in eating habits between Australians and, and say, Canadians or the rest of the world? No, I, I don't think so. I mean... Australia and Canada are like cousins. We're very, very similar. We're very laid back. We don't take ourselves too seriously. Even the only problem with that is all the Canadian girls love the Australian guys. That's the only, that, that's the only <laughs> negative. You know, you guys, uh, us being so close in nature, you're, you're better looking to have the cooler accent. <laughs> Well, you should come down to Australia, and I'm sure it'll be reciprocated, brother. <laughs> my, my wife will really be happy. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow. No, no, okay. <laughs> um, so, so really, we, you know, people just love to eat good food. Is that sort of the newer trend at the end of the day for, for, for any country? Yeah, and it has to be delicious as well. Yeah. Delicious, good for you. And it just tick all the boxes. Good for the planet, good for the body. But and that's what I love, by the way, about Pete. You know, the food is actually healthy. There's so many places out there that claim that the food's healthier. They put this, like, healthy spin on the feel. But we're really going to do it 
all the way through, right? For real, yeah. I usually have a shirt that says food is medicine, and I firmly believe that. And uh, if we can embrace that, which we're embracing here at the moment, and, and give people the opportunity to eat healthy if they choose to, or they can go traditional, uh, you know, maybe one once a week they, they go all, all the healthy, and then another day a week they... They choose whatever they want to. Yeah, at the end of the day, you still want you know your pizza to be, I think, traditional and conventional and stuff. But uh, you're right; it, we we've learned so much uh, dietary habits and 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 you know all these health conscious kind of websites. And, and you do a lot of health conscious stuff as well. You 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 have a big stuff on YouTube going on, right? Yeah, so I got a film on Netflix called The Magic Pill. So if anyone wants to check that out, it just shows the power of food to be able to use as a tool for gaining greater health. Uh, without a doubt. What about what about um, food and exercise? Do you, is that is that a big thing too? Like, is it, does that complement one another? Yeah, I think the pillars of good health is good, good food, good sleep, good relationships, good sex, and uh, off you go. You okay. Know? How about booze? Am I allowed booze on the side or what? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, on, I never tell people what they can and can't do. <laughs> mate. You're you're an adult. You can work it out. You do what makes you happy, and I think that's that's the key. I appreciate it. Uh, Sean Dollinger is with us, uh, with Pete Evans and, and Benji Nasberg, and we're hanging out at Carboni Pizza, Carboni Cafe Club here on uh, St. Mary Street in Winnipeg. Uh, my first time in Winnipeg. Sean, you, you, you've spent a lot of time in Winnipeg. Yeah, definitely, especially the summers. Summers are great here. What, what makes Winnipeg so special as a whole? People. The people here are fantastic, and it's just been great. I came out here for the first time about 15 years ago now, seeing the city uh, expand, grow. Hockey's back in town. That's the new lifeline, and it's just been fantastic experiencing all that's going on. And Benji's doing a great job. Uh, given a great spot for people to go and is, have a good time. Is Winnipeg becoming, you know, we think of Toronto sort of this big urban diverse kind of kind of center that that everyone kind of ends up in and, and it is massive and it's huge. And and for some reason my stereotype with back to healthy eating Pete and, and Sean is is you know, you see it sometimes in the urban centers, but not necessarily in the rural ones. Uh, and that might be a stereotype of mine. And you think of Winnipeg as a little bit more rural, not the biggest sort of urban center and biggest city. But are, but are people kind of, do we think that, that that's just a worldly thing now, that people are taking their food and, and the way they eat a little, more, a little more seriously? I'd like to hope so. That's for sure. Definitely. I know there's, the way you can judge that is what's available in the supermarkets, for instance, and it's constantly evolving and constantly becoming better and better. So there's more thought into where the food comes from, how it's raised or how it's farmed, and uh, people are being, they've, they're voting with their dollars. They're choosing what is ethical and, and what, is, what is healthy. So that's always a good barometer, I find. It's part of the problem with, with fast foods and stuff is that it is, can be still very affordable for people and that... Have we figured that out as, as sort of foodies on how to get people eating healthy who maybe you know don't have those disposable dollars to do it all the time? Yeah, I mean, this is one option, coming in here and uh, grabbing yourself a pizza. I mean, it's, it's pretty relatively value for money, you know. It's good quality and it's going to fill you up. Um, and at home, you can cook healthy food on a very tight budget. If, if, if you're willing to maybe step out of the box from what you maybe normally eat. So I always say try to go nose to tail. Eat every part of the animal if you can. And, and the cheapest parts are generally the ones that taste the best too. They might require a little bit longer cooking, but you get yourself a, a slow cooker or a pressure cooker and the job's done. You know, And you might eat more ground beef or, or mincemeat, as we say in Australia. So the, the, the cheaper cuts can go a long way. And then in-season vegetables... If you can grow any yourself or grow your own herbs, every every little bit helps. Have some chickens in the backyard laying fresh eggs, and okay. we do that at home and at fresh eggs every day, and it's pretty cheap. Well, it's amazing because short ribs is such a popular dish now, and that really derived from from the Jewish culture. That was a, the, one of the cheapest cuts of the meat, and they used to buy that and 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 slow cook it and and eat it, and and now it's like one of the most expensive things on the menu. But you know, so a lot of it is perception when it comes to food, isn't it? It is, and it's, it's definitely how, and that's something I do and I try to do with my social media is post ingredients or dishes or when I travel different parts of the world is show how different cultures think about food and their philosophy behind food. So I'm constantly sharing dishes that I know aren't going to get the likes per se, but I want to push people out of their comfort zone just a little bit to see how it's just a change of perception. So I don't know whether I successfully do that or not, but it doesn't probably matter. I'm just happy to share my experience. And I share the food that I like to eat, you know, and some of it's expensive, but most of it is probably 
pretty pretty budget friendly. Pete Evans is hanging out with us. Uh, recently signed on by Carboni Pizza to work together and collaborate and make the best pizza in the world, which they're already doing, and add to that menu. What would some of the most eclectic foods be that you've eaten in the past? Eclectic. Explain what... It- Insects. Uh, <laughs> you know, y- unique. Something that wouldn't be on the traditional menu. Yeah, uh, it was really interesting. Um, I have eaten turtle. I have eaten... Spiders, I've eaten Spiders. crickets, I've eaten ants, I've eaten sperm sack of fish in Japan, you know, and uh, even got my kids to try that when we were in Japan recently too. And they weren't too keen on it because it was the, the idea about that type of thing. But, you know, I ate brains a lot, I ate tail, I, I've eaten balls, testicles. <laughs> Not at all. If you haven't done, if you haven't eaten a testicle in your life, then you, know, you, 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 you haven't lived. <laughs> hey, well, I've I've lived a lot. Then, I'm, whoa, are we on air here? Hang on a second. Um, <laughs> There'll be no testicles on any of the pizzas here at Cover, and I just want to make that perfectly clear right now. <laughs> do you, Pete, do you like do you like coming to Canada? Do, do you do you enjoy? You said we're sort of like relatives, you know, mothers from another type, type of thing, or brothers from another. But do you do you? I mean, do you do you really love the vibe here? Yeah, actually, this year is the first time. I've I've actually made it into Canada okay. for the first time, and they let me back in the second time, so that was great. <laughs> and I spent a bit of time in Vancouver with uh, Sean and went to Whistler, which I thought was amazing. And I spent yesterday here walking around the town when I arrived and watched the gay festival or the pride festival, which was, which was amazing. I saw the street buskers or the park, uh, the, uh, the park buskers that busking for the money. And last night I went cruising around the town and uh, checked out the scene, and it's, it's very cool out over here. Excellent, man. How much pressure is there being a, a world-class chef and, and being recognized everywhere you go? And is it, it, you know, to always continue to create and entertain? Is that is that a, is that a difficult task for you, Pete? No, not really. I'm, I follow my heart and I follow my, my gut and we're creating something unique here in, in Carboni and uh, hopefully we're going to bring that to Australia soon and uh, different parts of the world too because I think good food and, and pizza especially should be something that everybody can enjoy uh, without feeling like guilty or feel like they they can't eat it anymore. So uh, the way that we've developed these doughs and the toppings, I, you know, I'm happily I would happily eat here every night of the week. Yeah, it's nice to have to have all the healthy options too. It's not, you know it's nice. To, I'm a, I'm a new parent uh, and and well not new three years I guess, but and and we have a second one on the way. And, you know, I'm not necessarily so concerned with what my kid eats, but a lot of parents are. My mother being uh, my mother, my wife being his mother, being a little bit more conscious of that. And I would imagine that that helps too. So when you're bringing the kids for pizza, that they're sitting here going, oh, you know what? Now now we don't. You're right. We don't. It's not. We're not feeling as guilty for doing it. That's right. F- family. It's a family. But you know, singles come here. I'm I'm looking forward to tonight too to see how how the party party unfolds. <laughs> Sean, how is the party going to unfold? Do we know? <laughs> no idea. We're going to ask Benjamin. <laughs> well, what's there to do in Winnipeg? Let's get back. What, what, what uh, other than Carboni Pizza? What should we? Uh, yeah, Benjamin. Let, let's. Uh, well, Pete, maybe just yeah, grab. Just don't go anywhere though. Pete Evans. Where, what do we do in Winnipeg? I don't even know what to do in Winnipeg. I just only want fans in Winnipeg because Series XM's you know all across Canada. Well, typically we go to the lake on the weekends because that's the best part about summer. But right now, I'd say everyone's on the Raptors bandwagon. All right. That's so okay. right now, it's all about the Raps. Other than that, I mean, the Jets are b- babies, right? We've got to keep an eye on them all day. Uh, but at a time like this, summer is the best. The best thing to do is hit the lake on the weekends and hit a patio in the summer. Uh, we got a nice one downtown conveniently, so... Shout out to Carbone. <laughs> nice. What, what, what would like be a trait of a of of a of a you know someone who lives in Winnipeg, born, bred in Winnipeg? Like what would a stereotype, but a cool common trait? If it's minus ten degrees out, you'll see shorts and sandals. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. And Dollinger's one of those people, actually. <laughs> can you, Absolutely. John? You can handle the winners. Yeah, you know You're that guy. Uh, yeah, born in Montreal. You know, it's uh, everybody says, "Oh, Winnipeg," but look, today I bet you were in the warmest part. Of Canada, it was freezing in Toronto when I right? left this morning. To be honest, so 30 yeah, degrees. It's be- yeah, it is. It's it's absolutely beautiful here in Winnipeg. Pete, have you experienced a Canadian winter yet? I I popped over to Vancouver at the start of the well, year. Well, that's not a Canadian winter. Well, we went skiing and it was <laughs> minus thirty something degrees. Yeah, he was there right during minus thirty, and it shattered me. It, <laughs> yeah. it, I I promise you, I was like, what the is going on here? 
I had tears <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it nearly put me off skiing for the rest of my life. I was like, <laughs> I, it, 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 it crushed me. I can imagine. And I, it takes a lot to crush me. And, and sitting on that lift that wasn't in a gondola, I was like, whoa, I'm not enjoying this whatsoever. But I love the view. Yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. Where, where in Australia do you reside? Uh, I live in Sydney. I have been there for about 20 years, which is a good, fun, cosmopolitan city. And I've also got a little property um, near the Queensland border. So warm weather, good surf. Wow, good, good land. That's beautiful. What about, is, is the is the like uh, the crocodile uh, stereotype true, or is that is that a stupid thing to even be asked? Are they everywhere? No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because I've been a few Ubers over the over the last week over here in Canada and also in in the states, and I get all asked the same thing. They're like, "Oh, I'm not." I said, "Have you been to Australia?" And they're like, "No," because of the animals and the insects that you've got, and the snakes and all the deadly. <laughs> I, I need to find somebody that actually can dis, dispel that myth because there's none of that. I mean, it's there, but you yeah, don't... Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Like, I was petrified to go. I thought you'd really? see... Really? Yeah, originally when I went, people said, oh, there's scorpions, these bugs, there's this nothing. spider, that... I, you know, all the trips I've went, I've never seen anything. Um, uh, you know, speaking of Australia, and, and, and now that uh, Sean Dollinger, you, you, you grabbed the mic here, uh, you, you sort of obviously being very well known from the cannabis space and, and you know, taking companies public and advising on many different companies in, in that area. What's, what's the situation going on with cannabis and, and Australia? Is it, is, it, is it legal there or is it, good? Is it going to be? Well, Pete's got really, really involved, so he probably could answer that question even better than I can. Yeah, so I'm actually, f- today I was filming a documentary. I'm uh, halfway, well, nearly finished filming a documentary on cannabis, which is why I came to Canada in the first place and the States. Uh, Australia, le- medically legal, but there's only 2,000 people so far that have got access to it over the few years out of 25 million people. So it's, it's the black market we know has at least 100,000 users using it. Yep. So something has to change. So part of what I'm doing is, is I guess I want to present the follow-up film to The Magic Pill is going to be called The Magic Plant. Mm. We're, s- we're seeing, can this plant be used for, for health purposes? What are the problems? What are the, what are the pluses? What are the minuses? Where has it been in throughout history? Where are we now? Or where is it going into the future? So uh, today I was out at District 9, which is uh, up just out of Winnipeg here, or in Winnipeg, I should say. They grow 40,000 plants in their facility and they're just about to grow another 40,000. So they'll be gr- producing 80,000. Canopy 000. owns them, right? No, I think they're... Oh, they're, oh, they're, they're their own. Yeah, but okay. one thing interesting on Pete's numbers, they say they know about 100,000 people on the black market. We bought a company, uh, you know, when I was with Namaste, uh, Australian Vaporizers. And Australian Vaporizers has a customer list of over 500,000 customers. Wow. So, so and pe- so people aren't buying these vaporizers just to buy vaporizers. So it's absolutely incredible if you think about it. They know of for, they guess, 100,000. Why are they so behind? I, f- I feel like it's a progressive country. No, we're, we're, we're definitely not a progressive country. We're, we're usually the last to adopt other... <laughs> We, we usually look to Canada, to New Zealand, to America. Okay. And uh, we're usually the last to follow. I didn't realize that. By the way, when's the third film you're making called The Magic Mushroom? When can we do that one? <laughs> I'm actually doing that next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> after this one. Give me time, bro. Are you, are you, yeah, <laughs> Pete Evans. But the one after this is going to be on psychedelics. Uh, well, I mean, and, that, and we'll start to see the de- decriminalization of that aspect We've as well. We've already like, seen it in Colorado, in right? In Colorado, exactly. And, and Portugal being the best case scenario of all of that. So uh, really exciting stuff. Pete, where can I, I mean, uh, where, I mean, you're so worldly renowned and, and people love Pete Evans, but where, in case people haven't uh, heard of you for some reason, and where can they go and find you? Uh, Chef Pete Evans. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, website, PeteEvans.com. Please. And, and uh, do you, are you good with replying in the DMs? Are you, are, you, are you active on it? I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty good. How many good. followers in the network now? Uh, nearly a couple of million. That's unbelievable, man. That's uh, good for you. I mean, I would, I would feel like that's a lot of pressure, but you're, uh, you're kicking ass with it. So far, so good. Other than Australia, where would be your most popular country that people are like, oh, I know that guy, hello, you know, is... I, d- I do a show in, in America that I've hosted for seven years called Movable Feast, which is a PBS cooking show. And I've also created two series called The Paleo Way, which is on Netflix, uh, and The Magic Pill, as we discussed before. And I host a show in Australia for the last 10 years called My Kitchen Rules, which is shown in 160 countries around the world. And we film 
50 episodes of that a year. So, Do you want to save some work for other entertainers, or are you just going to take <laughs> it right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I never wanted to come into this field, and uh, I reluctantly came into there because I had no desire to be in front of a camera Funny. or anything like that. that the perfect jawline, right? You know, like, <laughs> like, like they're just bringing this guy in. Like, they can't help it, Pete. <laughs> and, and I just keep getting employed. And, so, and, uh, and in case they don't employ me, I'm making my own stuff now too. So I've got the backup plan. Very smart producing as well. Well, thank you to Pete Evans. Thanks to Sean yeah. Dollinger for this great Thanks, introduction. Uh, Sean introduced me to, to, uh, to Benjamin, and uh, now we're working with Carboni Pizza. And, and, of course, Pete had joined us a, a few months back over the phone. And we're all here live in Winnipeg, man, as we're... And, and Benji, just quickly, what are we celebrating? What are we opening? And when can we expect to see more Cabonis all across the country? So right now we're celebrating this amazing release with Pete Evans and our uh, restaurants in Winnipeg and having a taste of summer menu that's, you know, designed to cater to all the lifestyles uh, and and ways of living and eating. So paleo, keto, vegan, gluten friendly, the whole nine. Um, We're focusing on that rollout today. Today's the first VIP tasting. So a little sneak peek of what's to come and our fast fired concept, uh, which is more of a quick service approach to the pizza scene. That's something that we're scaling across Canada right now. Uh, We should be in Toronto by the start of next year. We're working with Pete now for some Australian opportunities and we'll be across the, uh, you know, we'll be a global brand in, what, two years? Let's go with two. Uh, I'm going there. Two years. I'll start with one. How about that? (laughs) Uh, Well, I look forward to uh, working with you guys and and helping promote as much as I can and just being involved in any way possible. It's really exciting stuff. Thank you to Sean. Sean Dollinger. Make sure you go and look for him, too. Very dynamic individual. Always uh, love doing stuff with Sean. Thank you to Pete, and thank you to Benji. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Let's have a good night. Cheers. Cheers. This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167.